everyone. Welcome to the computation of the average turnaround time and the average waiting time using another type of CPU scheduling algorithm which is known as the non-preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm or the what we call SJF. So when we say non-preemptive, it means that if the CPU is allocated to a process, that process will hold the CPU until its execution time. Now, because this is shortest job first scheduling algorithm, here, the process with the shortest execution time or burst time should be selected for execution first, but then that process should be in the ready queue. And then if there are two or more processes having the same burst time, we are going to apply the concept of first come first serve to the process having the same burst time. Okay? So, but before we can compute the average turnaround time, we need first to compute the turnaround time of each of our given process. And before we can compute the average waiting time, we need first to compute the waiting time of each of our given process. In order for us to compute the turnaround time of each of our given process, we need first to determine the completion time of each of our given process. So say for example, we are given here five process, P1, P2, P3, P4, and P5. Then we also have here their corresponding arrival time. The arrival time of P1 is 1, the arrival time of P2 is 2, the arrival time of P3 is 0, the arrival time of P4 is 4, the arrival time of P5 is 2. Then we also have here their burst time. So the burst time of P1 is 2, the burst time of P2 is 6, the burst time of P3 is 3, the burst time of P4 is 2, and the worst time of P5 is 4. I will now be creating a Gantt chart for me to be able to show to you when a particular process gets the CPU time for its execution and when it completes its execution. So this Gantt chart will also help us in determining the completion time of each of our given process and consequently we will be able to compute for the turnaround time and the waiting time of each of our given process. So this is our Gantt chart. We are going to start from time zero. At this unit of time, which is zero, we check for the process that arrived in the ready queue. Okay, so we refer to our table. So in our table, we have here a P3, which arrived in the ready queue at time 0. Okay? And since it is only P3, which is in the ready queue at time 0, so we are going to allocate the CPU to P3. Okay? So the first time of P3 is 3. It is not the lowest worst time here, but still... We are going to allocate the CPU to P3 since it is the only process in the ready queue at time 0. So, in the gun chart, okay, we now have here P3. And it will execute for 3 unit of time since its burst time is 3. So, in the gun chart, we are going to add 3 to 0. Okay, we now have here 3. Now, at this unit of time, which is 3, okay, so we have here 3 unit of time, we check for the process which arrived in the ready queue, okay, so we refer again to our table. So, in our table, we have here P1, P2, and P5, which arrived in the ready queue at time 3, okay, so since the arrival time of P1 is... 1, the arrival time of P2 is 2, and the arrival time of P5 is 2, okay? 
So, which means that P1, P2, and P5 are in the ready queue at time 3. Okay. From among P1, P2, and P5, okay, which are in the ready queue, okay, the one having the smallest burst time is, so we check for the burst time of P1, P2, and P5, burst time of P1 is 2, burst time of P2 is 6, and the burst time of P5 is 4. So from among P1, P2, and P5, the process having the smallest worst time is P1 since its worst time is only 2. And since we are in non-preemptive shortest job force scheduling algorithm, wherein we allocate the CPU to the process having the shortest execution time or worst time first, so therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU to P1. Okay, so in the gun chart, we now have here P1. And it will execute for 2 unit of time since its worst time is 2. So in the gun chart, we add 2 to 3 here. So this is now equivalent to 5. Okay. So we are done with the execution of P3 and P1. Okay, at this unit of time now, which is 5, the process in the ready queue are, okay, so we refer to our table, okay, the process in the ready queue at time 5, okay, are P2, okay, P4, and P5. Since the arrival time of P2 is 2, the arrival time of P4 is 4, and the arrival time of P5 is 2. So, P2, P4, and P5 are in the ready queue at time 5. So, from among P2, P4, and P5, the process having the smallest worst time is, so we check for the worst time of P2, the worst time is 6, worst time of P4 is 2, and the worst time of P5 is is 4. So, the process having the smallest worst time from among P2, P4, and P5 is P4. Okay, so, therefore, we are going to allocate the CPU to P4 first. So, in the Gantt chart, we now have here P4. And it will execute for 2 unit of time since its worst time is 2. So, in the Gantt chart, we add 2 to 5 here. So, this now becomes 7. Okay. We are done with the execution of P3, P1, and P4. Okay. The process in the ready queue. Okay. So, at this unit of time is P2, okay, and P5. Okay. The worst time of P2 is 6, and the worst time of P5 is 4. So, therefore, we are going to allocate first the CPU to P5 since it has smaller burst time as compared to the burst time of P2. Okay, so in the gun chart, we now have here P5. And it will execute for 4 unit of time because its burst time is 4. So in the gun chart, we add 4 to 7 here. So this now becomes 11. Okay, and finally, we are going to allocate the CPU to, okay, the process in the ready queue, the last process in the ready queue, and it is P2. So, in the gun chart, we now have here P2, and it will execute for 6 unit of time since its worst time is 6. So, in the gun chart, we add 6 to 11 here, so we now have here 17. Okay, so we are done with our gun chart, okay? Because we are done with our gun chart, we can now determine via the use of our gun chart the completion time of each of our given process. Okay, so we refer to our gun chart. We start from determining or identifying the completion time of P1. 
Okay, so this is P1. The completion time of P1 is this one. Okay, so the completion time of P1 is 5. Okay, then P2. Okay, so this is P2. This is its completion time. So the completion time of P2 is 17. Okay, and then P3. Okay, so this is P3. This is its completion time. The completion time of P3 is 3. Okay, then the completion time of P4 is, so this is P4 in the Gantt chart. This is its completion time. The completion time of P4 is 7. And the completion time of P5, okay, so this is P5. This is its completion time. The completion time of P5 is 11. So we now have here the completion time of each of our given process. We can now compute the turnaround time of each of our given process. So the turnaround time is computed using the formula completion time minus arrival time. Okay, so we start from computing the turnaround time of P1. Okay, so we now have here the completion time of P1 which is 5 minus the arrival time which is 1. So the turnaround time of P1 is 4. The turnaround time of P2 is, okay, so we have here its completion time, which is 17, minus the arrival time, which is 2. So the turnaround time of P2 is 15. The turnaround time of P3 is, okay, so we now have here the completion time of P3, which is 3, minus the arrival time of P3, which is 0. So the turnaround time of P3 is 3. Then the turnaround time of P4, okay, so we now have here its completion time, which is 7, minus its arrival time, which is 4. So the turnaround time of P4 is 3. And the turnaround time of P5 is, so we now have here its completion time, which is 11, minus the arrival time, which is 2. So the turnaround time of P5 is 9. Okay, then... Okay, we now compute the waiting time of each of our given process using the formula turnaround time minus first time. So we start from computing the waiting time of P1. So the waiting time of P1 is its turnaround time, which is 4, minus the worst time, which is 2. So the waiting time of P1 is 2. The waiting time of P2 is its turnaround time, which is 15, minus the worst time, which is 6. So, the waiting time of P2 is 9. The waiting time of P3 is its turnaround time, which is uh, 3, okay, minus the worst time, which is 3 also. So, the waiting time of P3 is 0. The waiting time of P4 is its turnaround time, which is 3, minus the worst time, which is 2. So, the waiting time of P4 is 1. And the waiting time of P5 is its turnaround time, which is 9 minus the arrival time, which is 4. So, the waiting time of P5 is 5. Okay? So, we are done with the computation of our turnaround time and waiting time. So, we can now compute the average turnaround time and the average waiting time. So we start from computing the average turnaround time. Okay, so the average turnaround time is computed by adding the turnaround time of P1, which is 4, plus the turnaround time of P2, which is 15, plus the turnaround time of P3, which is 3, plus the turnaround time of P4, which is 3, plus the turnaround time of P5, which is 9. Okay, so since this is computing the average turnaround time, so we add the turnaround time of our given process, then divide them by the number of process, which is 5. Okay? So the sum of 4 plus 15 plus 3 plus 3 plus 9 is equivalent to 34 divided by 5. So, our computed average turnaround time is 6.8, okay? Then, we proceed with the computation of the average waiting time, okay? So, the average waiting time is equivalent to the waiting time of P1, which is 2, plus the waiting time of P2, which is 9, 
plus the waiting time of P3, which is 0, plus the waiting time of P4, which is 1, plus the waiting time of P5, which is 5. Okay? So we add the waiting time of our given process, then divide it by the number of process, which is 5. Okay? So the sum of 2 plus 9 plus 0 plus 1 plus 5 is equivalent to 17 divided by 5. So our computed average waiting time is 3.4. So these are our computed average turnaround time and average waiting time using the non-preemptive shortest job first scheduling algorithm.